Dave, you asked me about, uh, you know, how many, basically how much time I spent together putting, putting together a course, mm -hmm. uh, how much, you know, do I, how big is my team? <laughs> I mm -hmm. laugh at that because my team I, is I'm one. Sure. Okay. Okay. I, I'm yeah. the only person, I have no assistants. Uh -huh. uh, my only assistants are, I do actually, I have, um, I have three assistants. I have Google Calendar. Okay. I have Todoist <laughs> and I have Zapier. Okay, uh -huh. Zapier is really my, my biggest assistant because Zapier has a bunch of automations that I yeah. that I use for my courses. So I have I have uh, almost twenty courses for sale on my website. I uh -huh. get sales of random courses, you know, all month long, and mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. It's all automated. Everything is. Mm -hmm. I have a fourth assistant. It's called Mailchimp, and right. so a fifth yeah. assistant called PayPal. So PayPal, Mailchimp, Zapier, my assistants. Yeah, it's all hooked up. Right. They all do that. Uh, my yeah. I have assistants as Fortune 500 companies. Essentially, <laughs> I have big assistants. You know. Yeah. So anyway, so I have uh, so in terms of how much time I spend, um, basically, uh, I, my each each course of mine has like multiple modules or parts. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays my courses have six parts each. The first part usually takes me about six hours to prepare for the first part. Each part is about an hour and a half of course delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the six hours is spent, you know, the course document, the first module takes me longer because I had to like sketch out the entire course and, you know, the outline, the whole thing, and then prepare for the first module and probably parts of the second one so that I feel good about starting. Mm -hmm. And so I take six hours to prepare for the first session, uh, mm -hmm. the first teaching session. And then each teaching session after that takes me about three to four hours to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, and I really shouldn't take more than that. If I take more than that, then I know I'm taking, I'm over preparing. And so three to four hours per course delivery session is just about enough time because I've learned and I'm still learning. I, I'm doing a bad job of it. I teach too much. Like I put too much material into every course. Yeah. It's too mm -hmm. overwhelming. And right. so I, I, it's, it's taken me 12 years and I still haven't learned the lesson. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to be better about it over time. Yeah, so over preparing. Yeah. Vulnerability. I appreciate that. That's yeah, no, I totally. Here. Yeah. I, I mean, for the problem. For all of us yeah. who really care as teachers and as, mm -hmm. you know, service providers, we tend to over-prepare and, and, sure. and give too much. So, um, and too much is not necessarily a good thing if we're, the student is overwhelmed, they can't absorb yeah, right. and they can't mm -hmm. yeah, and integrate. Um, and then, and then I have two additional hours every week for, for that's related to my course uh, business, which is one hour for marketing and one hour for follow-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the hour for marketing, I have a checklist for each week. So I have like a pre-launch checklist. It takes me about an hour. I have a, my pre-launch actually happens in about a three week. So I do three hours for pre-launch over three weeks leading up to the, to the actual, hey, it's ready for early bird, you know, sign yeah. up. Mm -hmm. It takes me about three weeks and one hour each week. Like the first week is like setting up my automations, MailChimp, Zapier, blah, blah, blah. The mm -hmm. second week is, you know, drafting the, the, the post, the email, uh, mm -hmm. the post anyway, um, getting some feedback on it. The third week is like, anyway, the different, different, you know, checklists and things like that. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, and then the launch week has, has basically there's two launch weeks. Anyway, essentially one hour for marketing, one hour for follow-up. The follow-up is basically sending out the recordings. So this week, you know, this week, instead of teaching a, a class session, we're doing these Q&As. So my one hour follow-up this week will be uh, processing these recordings and sending them out to, to, to all the recent students. But Dave, any other questions yeah. from there? Um, no, that's, that's pretty uh, good overview. I think so this, and you cover, you have that course, um, like how to make a course. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, how, how recent was that recorded? And like, what's? Yeah, that's that was. Uh, I think probably 2018. I'm going to relaunch that later this year, so you might just want to wait for that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So say. then uh, it'll, it'll include my learnings from the last three years and how yeah. I'm doing things now. Okay, so, that's that's yeah. good. Good heads up. Yeah. Okay. Great. No, thanks. I appreciate all you offer and, uh, Thank and you. your your take on things. Thank you very totally. much. You're welcome. Yeah. And yes, I I will also have an upcoming course about Zapier and how exactly I use it because it is obviously. It's taking more than like five minutes to show you around there. So um, that's coming up. And uh, uh, Anita says, what software to edit? Um, do you mean videos? I don't edit any of my videos for courses. I edit, I edit videos uh, for my, fr my, my free videos, the one I record via phone. That sometimes I record some free videos via phone. So I might edit using uh, cap wing to put a lower third. I, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Search, you know, George Powell, cap wing. Uh, and K A P W I N G. That's software. That's but for my course videos, I don't, I don't edit. 
the simplest way I do it uh, now nowadays, as of 2021, I'm recording middle of 2021. I'm recording my courses in little segments, and each each module is essentially a YouTube uh, playlist of little segments, and my students are quite enjoying that. And so I, you know, it, and the course ends up being like four to six YouTube playlists with like shorter segments, and it's easier to watch, easier for me to refer to. Uh, you know, if I need to send a client a particular segment, it's much easier and also easier for me to update the course in the future when I need updated. I'm like, oh, that particular segment is outdated. Let me record another one and the rest is fine. And that's that's great thing about recording courses. So the way I do it, I record it in Zoom and I basically start the recording at the start of a segment. And when the when that segment is done, I end the recording like I'm about to do now. <laughs>